All right, thank you. Uh, so I'm Patrick Strick. I'm the product manager for OpenShift Dedicated and uh, Azure Red Hat OpenShift, which from now on I'm just going to abbreviate ARO or Arrow because it's a really long name. Um, and then, uh, as she mentioned, Andrew uh, Cathro is uh, right over there, and um, he'll be up for the AMA too. He can come up now if he wants. <laughs> um, so the idea that um, you may be asking yourself, what is OpenShift dedicated, uh, and what's, what's Arrow? I've heard this before, but I don't really know what that is. Um, the answer is really simple. It's just OpenShift. Uh, the difference is that we manage the um, provisioning and operations and security of the cluster for you. That's, that's really the only difference. The, 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 it's exactly the same OpenShift, same installer that you would get if you downloaded uh, the IPI installer from, uh, from try.openshift.com and installed it yourself. Um, so the value we provide is a consistent experience um, that you know, all of our customers uh, can get and the value of the knowledge that we get from managing all these, uh, all these different customers. Um, and also the price is basically the same as if you uh, didn't, if you just bought the OCP. Um, so if you're comparing between OCP and one of our managed offerings, um, there's, it's pretty much the same price between the two. So what's our goal? We want to be the preferred way that uh, OpenShift is run in the cloud. Um, how do we get there? We do that by removing any of the friction that uh, you would experience provisioning your cluster, operating the cluster, or securing the cluster. Um, we wanna make sure that it's as easy a process as possible for you. Now, this may look familiar. Uh, this is a, um, you know, if you have OpenShift in your environment, you know, this is kind of a rough topology. You can see from the thing on the left, all the, it doesn't show up very well, but the, there's gray boxes beside most of the top of those. And those are the things that you're responsible for in a normal uh, self-managed OpenShift environment, right? You're, you're responsible for user management, um, you know, quota management, uh, cluster creation, cluster management, logging and, and monitoring the cluster, network configuration, uh, and software and security updates. And then Red Hat is obviously there for you to support the platform. So this is what it looks like from a managed OpenShift perspective, right? We take everything from cluster creation down and we handle that for you um, so that you can focus your business on the, the value generating aspects, which is getting your applications developed um, and published and available to your customers. There's a few, so what we're doing to get to where we wanna be. When um, OpenShift 4 was released in June last year, we started working on making the product as self-service as possible. So we take OpenShift, took OpenShift 4 and we said, what can we do to, to make it easier for you? And we built uh, a whole infrastructure and um, web interface. It also has an API and CLI that uh, will be coming out, you know, it's, it's, it's available there, but it's not public, um, that you can use to interact with the cluster, create the cluster, and, um, you know, make changes to it, see the stats for it. So we've spent the last six to seven months really focusing on that self-service piece. We wanted to make the experience as easy as possible. We've, now that we've got the groundwork laid there, and, and that's in a really good place, we're moving more towards the second two pillars, uh, second two initiatives, which is to showcase everything that OpenShift 4 has to offer for you from a, a, a de developer experience perspective, and then enhancing the value uh, based on you know, specific configuration needs or um, you know, new features that may not come from OpenShift itself that, uh, that you would want and you know, would be helpful for you to, to grow your business. This is a few just highlights of upcoming work, uh, both from OpenShift Dedicated and from Arrow. Um, the SOC 2 Type 1 and ISO 27000 are, we're wrapping those up. So those, uh, if you're interested in those type of compliance certifications, uh, we'll have that very soon. Um, similarly, on the uh, Arrow side, we are um, wrapping up some regu initial regulatory compliance, which will also include those uh, SOC and ISO. Um, the uh, second bullet there I added, because it's not something we would normally include on the public roadmap, 
But it, because you all operate OpenShift or OKD yourselves, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're, you know, the things that we do. Um, so we do vulnerability and access control scans today, but they're manual. Um, so the team has to go in and you know, go through a checklist and, and make sure everything is good. So they're going through and creating a whole automated process to regular, cons constantly regularly do these uh, vulnerability scans and access control scans. Um, on the arrow side, you'll notice it says OpenShift 4.3. So today, arrow is, is 3.11. When arrow was launched last year, uh, OpenShift didn't support Azure as a cloud platform. So since, since it has, uh, we've added, since we've added that support in OpenShift, the team has been working very hard architecting what the design will look like in an arrow perspective. Because um, arrow, if you're not uh, aware, it is a native Azure service. So it's where OpenShift dedicated, you know, we are running this cluster on AWS and we partner with AWS. With Azure, it's uh, a joint team, uh, or with, with Arrow, it's a joint team with the, the Azure service. Um, and I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. So we've been architecting and that will be uh, coming later this year. Oops. Another kind of back-end thing I wanted to talk about um, is that OpenShift dedicated is not just something that businesses use, external customers use. Uh, we use it ourselves. Um, we use it to service um, and deliver OpenShift itself, right? So some of these are um, code names that you might have heard uh, in different OKD conversations uh, or maybe summit presentations. Um, Tollbooth is uh, where data comes uh, in and get in talks to from your cluster to our cluster. Um, same with the telemeter feedback loop. Um, Cincinnati is the engine that handles the upgrades for the OpenShift clusters, uh, OpenShift 4 clusters that are in the field. So when you subscribe to the fast channel or the stable channel, those channels and what the uh, upgrade graph looks like for each one is hosted in uh, Cincinnati. Um, and then Quay and all, the, all your subscription and entitlement management, those all run on OpenShift dedicated. So just a quick, uh, what does it look like to revision OpenShift that I said it's, we want to remove the friction. So what does that look like? Um, this is a screenshot-based uh, demo. <clears throat> so if you go to cloud.redhat.com, um, which if you have OpenShift at all, you should go to, uh, go to OpenShift Cluster Manager, and you'll see a list of your clusters, whether they're uh, OCP or OSD. You'll see all your clusters uh, that are OpenShift 4 in there. Um, and you can see if there's an update to one, you can update it from there if it's OCP. Um, but if you click Create Cluster, you'll get to choose um, which one, depending on your subscription. If you have a subscription for dedicated, you click that. Um, do you want to install it in your, um, in your AWS account, which is the Customer Cloud subscription, or in Red Hat's uh, AWS account? Um, put in, give it a name, pick which region, is it a single AZ or multi-AZ? Which uh, node type do you want for your compute? Uh, how many of those nodes? How much persistent storage? How many extra load balancers if you have a subscription for additional load balancers? Um, and then if you have a CIDR range that you need us to use, uh, you can put that in, especially if you're doing you know, VPN connection back to your own data center. And then click Create crust Cluster, and that's it. Within 30 minutes, you'll have a fully functional OpenShift 4 cluster um, that has um, CA certs um, applied to it already. Um, it's you know, fully configured on the, the AWS side, whether it's your AWS or our AWS, we'll take care of configuring the VPC and um, making sure that everything is set up. And it'll be also monitored by our SRE team and our SRE team will be getting alerts for it. Uh, once it's up, you can scale the cluster up or down by nodes, load balancers, or storage very easily from this uh, interface. Uh, and so that's my quick for OpenShift dedicated. For Arrow, it's a um, very similar process, but because it's a Azure service, um, you can use the AZ CLI. You just do AZ OpenShift create, and within a few minutes, uh, Arrow takes about 15 to 18 minutes. Uh, it'll be done, and you'll have an OpenShift cluster, um, and it will spit out the uh, URL to connect to the console. So I hope that shows a little bit about the 
ease that we've added in and the re reduction in friction that we've added um, to make getting OpenShift in the cloud easier for you. That's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you.